All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. Uh, good to see David Ketterman joining us this evening, a friend of our ministry, uh, and others already. A bunch of people are joining tonight. Good to see Linda Routley, who is one of our students in WBSU. Good to see Deborah Adcock joining us this evening, and um, a whole lot of others who are not in the chat room yet. Good to see Dr. Faye joining us this evening. I really appreciate my wife. She's a great support, the blessing running, uh, fully running World Bible School University. And let me just say for those who don't realize it, we have offices here in Joplin, Missouri, which are based in our home, but we have a section of the house, kind of like you get to leave the main part of the house and go to, the, go to work in the offices. And uh, then we're also uh, legally licensed in Sierra Leone uh, at West Africa, uh, where we have a, a Dr. Uh, Abednego Kamara, who is our international director for uh, World Bible School in Africa. And he's a blessing. Good to see Daniel Williams, Apostle Daniel Williams, who will be on with me in the morning as we talk about miracles on Friday morning conversations. Good to see David Jacobs, who, our board member, who actually lives here in Joplin and works here in the office, assisting Dr. Fay in any way that he can. Uh, runs Air and Forces and does all kinds of stuff. Good to see Dr. Kay Fairchild joining us this evening. And she will be on with me uh, very soon. Um, I'm going to take a quick peek because I know people really enjoy her ministry. She's going to be on with me. Um, let's see. Uh, next week, Pastor Rich Morton. Then Cindy Quarles will be on with me. Uh, Dr. Don Keithley will be on after that. Dr. Kay Fairchild, Pastor Kathy Walker Sims and Bishop Jamie Englehart and et cetera, et cetera. And so we've got a couple of months booked out there. So we're very excited about that. However, tonight, uh, good to see Mary Hal joining us. Uh, tonight, uh, Apostle Brian Christian uh, actually bailed me out because my guest uh, took a job and are, were 12, uh, six hours apart and it just just couldn't be worked out any other way. So uh, we were not able to have Dr. Christine Nelson on, but Apostle Brian uh, Christian decided that he could come on with me. And I am so grateful. I appreciate you so much, my brother. And thank you for being on the show tonight. Oh, the honor is mine, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy being with you. Hey, Wonder. we have a good time. And we've got a Friday morning series coming up. Um, a, a short time out where we're going to be talking about the spirit realm, but even more so about uh, what people call angels, the Greek word angelos, which really uh, means messengers. If you're talking about uh, messengers out of the unseen realm, that's my parents who are deceased. That's even me who lives in that realm. That's all spirit beings ever created. And uh, we're going to be talking about how to interact with that realm coming up. But tonight, uh, I just want to say this real briefly about uh, Apostle Brian and his wife. They travel full time in an RV around the USA, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone that they can. You can find out more about their ministry at www.foggm.org. What that stands for is Father of Glory Global Ministries. And if you will just type in uh, the link that I'm going to get put on here in just a few moments, uh, then you can find out everything you need to know about them. Uh, and uh, I found on their Facebook pages, uh, Apostle Brian's got some great history uh, in the information about him. And so, uh, you know what? Uh, Facebook's a good way to get to know people. Uh, sometimes maybe even a little more than you want to know. And I say that tonight because this is what we're talking about. We're talking about tonight agreeing as one without agreeing on everything. And I remember doing my uh, pre-show announcement for Kingdom Dynamics, and I talked a little bit about that because if you really want to find out that how you can be in agreement with one another and find out uh, you can do that without agreeing on everything, just be on Facebook. And even worse than that, have two Facebook accounts and almost 10,000 people. And, you know, sometimes there's some posts that receive some heavy opposition. Sometimes there's a lot of agreement. But the one thing that I do know is what we're talking about tonight from Amos 3, verse 3 can two walk together unless they are agreed. You ought to take that out of the New King James and read that in a whole lot of other translations, and that will give you a real uh, eye-opening um, um, uh, uh, truth about that. So let me set this up tonight. I just did a few uh, definitions uh, in announcing the show, and 
the English word agreement is defined as harmony or accordance in opinion or feeling, a position or result of agreeing. The English word agree, which is the root word, uh, is defined as having the same opinion about something. Now, I love it when people have the same opinion that I do. <laughs> that, that just feels so good, you know. Yeah, but but yeah. when opposition comes, I, I never mind where people say, you know what, here's my view of that same thing. I mean, it's always wonderful to see another view because the one thing, uh, Apostle Brian, I've realized we, we have a, a an accredited Christian university. Uh, we are just completing our first year and now moving into our master and doctorate classes. We've got two graduations coming up, one in the USA and one in Sierra Leone, West Africa. And here's what people do. They look to uh, my wife and I as knowing everything. And here's here's the rude awakening. We don't know everything. <laughs> and, and I teach theology and I can promise you, I don't know everything. And I never want to give people the impression that I know everything. And even the things I believe I know uh, are I'm not always 100 percent about for the reason that new revelation could come tomorrow and I'll be adjusting my view accordingly. So as we talk about this tonight, and I've got some other definitions, but how do we do this? How do we agree as one without agreeing on everything? How does that happen? Well, I don't know if it automatically happens. Um, I think, uh, in fact, a lot of the things that we want to be afraid of in areas of disagreement can actually become the point of contact for a greater depth of agreement. I think a lot of times we have to get through all of the uh, self-preservation, all of the uh, need to be right, all of the inadequacy and all of the things that, uh, you know, we have sometimes at a subconscious level that we're not yet conscious of until we're confronted. Um, you know, uh, you know, in amongst uh, Christians, especially, uh, we see a lot of discord and the Bible seems to be the, the centerpiece or indoctrination of the Bible seems to be the centerpiece of a lot of controversy and division uh, within the body of Christ today. And so, you know, uh, I think it was Paul that said uh, that we are to know no man after the flesh, but after the mm -hmm. spirit. And so uh, Christianity has been reduced to spiritual means, you know, the Bible and you have your doctrines in order and uh, you've kind of arrived at a completed truth. And that's, you know, what mainstream Christianity does. And so they're very leery of anything out there that is new to them. And so we tend to judge people based on what camp you're in, what stream you've been in, what truth you believe. And uh, truth has been reduced to, uh, to only what is written, to the letter, to a doctrine, to a principle, rather than truth being a person or a many-membered body as one new man. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, it says get wisdom in Proverbs, but then it says in all you're getting, get understanding and so understanding to me is where we get to the real heart of really seeing each other and uh and being able to really relate um uh for instance uh dr bill when i when i when, when you and i get together and we can agree we can agree at different levels we can agree on maybe how we perceive god how we perceive what the lord is doing but we also are going to look deeper at where we've walked in each other's shoes um, right. and wherever I have can relate to what you have walked through. And this might sound funny, but at a level that would normally be deemed negative. So if you've gone through something that's been painful in your life and I've gone through something that's been painful, we can relate there. We actually begin as human beings to bond first at a deeper level in what was traumatic than our mountaintop experiences. Um, if we only have our mountaintop experiences, then what happens is is we get offended at each other's uh, struggles. Yeah. But if we can if we can see each other's struggles from what we've walked through in each other's shoes, then we will not exalt ourselves above one another when one is being blessed and the other is still maybe waiting for that unveiling of of blessing or or their breakthrough or whatever they've been waiting for. Yeah, you know, and I mean, 
I I don't I don't have issues when when someone says, well, here's how I see that same thing. And it could be at a place where I don't really agree with that, but I can see where they're coming from. And and sometimes I think it's important when we're getting understanding is to understand maybe how they came to that conclusion. Uh, but I don't have to blast them because if I if I start seeing them as below me, in their level of understanding, then yeah. I get this uh, this dominant uh, attitude. Because remember, uh, intimacy requires equality. Yes. Okay, so if I begin to see them as my lesser, then I cannot have good intimate fellowship with that person. And I'm so grateful that the picture we see in that is that the Lord never treats us as a lesser, even though there might be in the Hebrew a hairline's difference between the big G and the little G. Uh, I yeah. still see that God doesn't treat me like the little G, even though I might honor him as the big G. He just does not give me that lesser or that look down his nose at attitude toward me because I don't think exactly like him. And I'm so grateful to him for that. Uh, when we're talking about uh, this scripture in Amos, the word agreed here comes from the he a Hebrew word, uh, which can refer to many different things. And here's the problem with the Strong's Concordance. Number one, if you take the original Greek from the first century, James Strong's didn't write the Strong's Concordance until 1890. And the, the Greek lexicon was written just a little bit before that in the 1800s. And so we have these far removed translations where now many times we see man's ideas mixed into what is being written. So I don't always agree with James Strong's. And so when you're looking at all of the definitions that James Strong's gives, what you find is uh you know a that's a carnal view right there uh that's more of a a traditional church view uh and all of a sudden here's a revelation that pops out and a lot of times where you find that in in those uh uh study helps is in the metaphoric or the symbolic use of a word but one of the ways uh it uses is used in a biblical form is to be set or to be placed before or to be fixed. So agreement has, and you said this, that agreement has nothing to do with doctrines. It has to do with inclusion. What, right. what do you mean by that? How can we deal with that? Well, I mean, there's obviously different levels of inclusion, but the ultimate level is that we have all been included in Christ. And I think the more we understand our true identity and origin, that in the spirit and outside of time and space, there is a singularity of one spirit. It's not you and God. Um, it, it's it God. And you are in that. And so, uh, you know, in the timeline version of ourselves or in this physical realm, there is this sense of duality that we have made our reality not only good and evil, us and them, light and darkness. Uh, but it's but, you know, it has definitely influenced the way in which we see and receive one another and mm -hmm. where superiority tries to creep in. You know, what I've found is, especially in this day and age, I mean, we're seeing more revelation and reformation than in any other time in the history of, of planet Earth uh, with the acceleration of uh, how people are coming into a greater understanding of identity, how the scriptures are being unfolded and, you know, wrong interpretations and performance based religiosity is finally being exposed. OK, and so we're coming into this. But there's also because of this extreme uh, acceleration, people are taking the truth intellectually, just like they did with religion. They're, they're still yes. taking another. Well, this is another key for my spiritual mindset. But every truth and every mystery of God has its counterpart reflection in the people around your life. And it's all based on the interaction of covenant and of relationship and of that oneness on earth as it is in heaven. And so when you see brethren arguing in these extremes and uh, again, returning to an us and them, like, you know, I read all, uh, all over Facebook, we don't need the Bible anymore, okay? Now, okay, now what, what happens when we do that? Well, what it, what it basically means is you've yet to really read it from the right intention. Now, I, I'm, I understand that religiously we don't need the Bible anymore in the way it's been taught. But 
what this is a book of the memories of people so the moment i don't need it i also don't need them and now we're right back to an us and them when we're proclaiming unity and oneness and yeah. so you know it's really you know how much are we tearing down relationship with the proclamation of truth today and so truth has its unveiling it has its process when you bring a truth to somebody uh, and uh, I'm, I'm speaking on this level of agreement since it's prevalent within the body of Christ, um, that when you speak truth to somebody, especially spiritual truth, and they've known something else, you're pulling the rug out from underneath them. So now they're just sitting there just going, what just hit me? Are you telling me that everything I believed is a lie? But now you want me to believe your truth. I can't even trust what I just believed before now that you've kind of blown up blown open my box right mm -hmm. you know and so what we have to understand is is the way in which we come to people i can come to you with my truth or i can come to you with the truth god has entrusted me trusted to me where you're at so that now yeah. i can be sensitive to who you are in god without compromising my own integrity because love is really at the heart of it speaking the truth in love means that the only way i can really implement truth is to go beyond the pulpit of verbalizing truth and into the journey of walking out the demonstration of truth with you you know yeah yeah amen yeah that's so good because uh to to be able to speak on someone else's level uh, sometimes becomes difficult when you're addressing a particular issue and you want to address it to a, a worthy depth so that it can influence someone to come up to a new level of believing. But in reality, you know, when I'm speaking to people in private, you know, I always try to add a little bit extra to the plate, but at the same yeah. time, I've got to be able to speak to them where they're at. Now, yeah. what I find hard, and I'll just give this example. Uh, I said this today at uh, at supper that uh, what when I pray and and especially when I bless the meal, uh, and I'm I'm good with blessing the meal. If you don't bless the meal, that's your thing. If you do bless the meal, that's okay with me too. But when I bless the meal, I generally do not say in the name of Jesus. Uh, because because oftentimes when I talk to people on Facebook, the first thing they'll say to me is after I say I pray for them and I'll write out a message of, of prayer, then they will come back to me with that instead of a thank you, it will be in the name of Jesus, as if the name of Jesus is the fix all or that's the one thing that'll make it work. When I'm fully aware that name means the character or the nature of Jesus. So I'm to pray like Jesus would pray or with his faith or something yeah. like that. And, and I think that revelation is still being understood. But what I can't do is blast someone because they use the name of Jesus. Now I'm not only trying to identify with their level, but I'm blasting them for their level. And same scenario with we don't need the Bible. Uh, yeah. I need the Bible, but do I, do I think the biggest problem with Christianity today is the modern translations of the Bible? Oh, I absolutely, I'm a teacher of theology. I absolutely believe that. So sure. that means then that when it comes to Bible college, for example, I have to do the very best that I can to interpret from the original language, from the original intent of the author, which is the father, and uh, from the the audience and, and the mindset of that day and so on. I think that just helps us to bring in a proper perspective, especially when we're teaching Bible college. Yes. Now, I don't go to that Bible college level always on Facebook, but I definitely go, don't go to that level when I'm talking to somebody in private. And of course, you know this apostle, you know, sometimes you can teach something on Facebook and the first thing you do is you get called names and you get told how wrong you are and you ought to repent and et cetera, et cetera. The last thing I'm gonna do is fight with, is fight with somebody over that. I may talk to them privately and discuss my perspective, but see, that's, what, that's so true what you said. When we think about inclusion, here's what we do. We instantly call that a doctrine or a denomination yeah. or a religious <clears throat> movement instead yeah. of thinking that inclusion is all about being included in Christ. And I don't know about you. I'm so grateful God didn't exclude me, but he Amen. included me. 
And so why would I not then at least move towards some degree of understanding of how to include other people? Please continue. Well, you know, um, I want to just give you just a, a scripture here in Second Corinthians 3 that really goes with this. And I'll just start at verse one. It says, do we again, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation or recommendation uh, from you? You are, are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart and it goes on and on uh but um you know when you read that in light of the the following chapter which is about seeing this ministry it says seeing this ministry in verse one therefore seeing we have this ministry and as we have received mercy we faint mm -hmm. not and it talks about you know renouncing hidden things of dishonesty not using the word of god deceitfully and you read on and on and on, and it'll talk about in verse 13, we have the same spirit of faith. Uh, verse 12, death works in me, but life in you. Um, verse 15, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound mm -hmm. to the glory of God. What you see mm -hmm. here is that when it's being revealed uh, of what truth is, it's that which is received and confirmed in each other's hearts through a relationship in which we are not using using the Bible to manipulate or control one another or to manipulate ourselves, but that everything that we're walking through that looks like death is, the, is we're walking through it for one another to bring life. And that this yeah. posture of interaction as seeing one another as the word of God and the God of the word, what happens is, is it will be a sound of glory. It will redound to the glory of God through many. And, um, you know, I find that when I come into contact and we travel all over, we minister in Baptist churches, Methodist churches, spirit filled churches. Uh, we minister in warfare churches, uh, uh, no hell churches, turn or burn churches, whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> we minister in all of them. And the one thing that I have found, I remember I used to come, go to, I used to minister, and this is for years. And my objective would be to come in and to help these poor, poor deceived believers, you know, get the, get, get the truth that I'm carrying, that I've been yeah. for running, you know. And uh, what I realized was, is I didn't even have the truth because, I was presenting it out of a place of insecurity, mistaken identity, still trying to prove my truth. So you can even speak all the right things to people. But when you're constantly getting rejection after rejection, I understand not everybody's going to receive what you have to say. I understand that balance. But when it's constant, and I've seen people like that, they constantly take it as persecution rather than a sign of maybe you need to change your frequency or the intention behind what you're trying to present. Because what happens is, is it's not about your verbal speech of truth. It's about the frequency behind it, which is love. And so what I found is, especially over the last couple of years, as the Lord's been helping me to deconstruct uh, mm -hmm. indoctrination and really come more into that uh, organic flow of just being me and being okay to be me and receiving the father's love for me. What I found is I can speak the same truth, but the frequency behind it carries an atmosphere that causes people to just want to receive because they see a heart of love. They see that I'm, I, there's a true intention. There's a realness that comes. Uh, and, um, you know, and I don't have to measure up. You know, I can just be me. And, you know, what's funny is sometimes what we try to do is we try to be a certain level of us around certain people and other people's. Yeah. We're, we're, and so eventually we're going to get confused. We're going to swap them and we're going to be the wrong version of us around certain people. And we're going to mess up, you know. And uh, so it's better to just be you all the time. You know, I know that some people can only take a tablespoon of me and others can take a gallon. But you know what? I don't take that as rejection. I take it as 
I need to be sensitive to where people are at. And it's not about me. It's not about my truth. It's about how can I minister what the Father has given me, which is you. It's in your heart. You're a living epistle, and I'm a part of your journey. How can I come to you where you're at and minister truth yeah. in your language uh, in a relational posture? And so, you know, I really believe that the body of Christ is we're, we're coming into that. We're coming into this place of, of no longer needing to defend what we believe because wherever I'm constantly defending what I believe, I have yet to believe what I defend. All right. Now you're going to have to clarify that. Say that again, please. <laughs> Whatever I defend, I believe is what I have yet to believe of what I defend. And so I basically what that means is that any proof I need, any truth I need to prove to you, I'm still trying to prove to myself. I'm projecting. Yeah. Okay. I'm projecting my insecurity because I found that even Jesus himself didn't defend his own truth. You know, it, it's yeah. amazing. Earlier you were talking about, you know, all, all these people are looking at you that you know it all, right? And you're like, I don't have a clue what's going on. Well, yeah. do you know Jesus didn't have a clue? He hadn't done any ministry. He, As soon as he begins his ministry, he chooses 12 and says, come on, let me go show you all the things I've yet to do. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me it's go and bother you with all the things I've yet yeah. to experience as a man. Yeah. And so it's a it's a beautiful revelation uh, of wow, this is this is an adventure. This isn't a duty. This isn't a pass yeah. or fail thing. And I think the moment we come out of that, we stop competing with one another. We stop comparing with one another. And we really come into the place in which love is the heart. I, I have watched people carry the truth of grace and sonship. But when somebody else doesn't receive it, they push them away as deceived. They, they, they don't include them. They exclude them. And they say, well, I can't be around this person because it's, you know, it's, it's interrupting who I am. Well, wait a second here. That's the truth you're defending that you don't yet believe. And your present situation yeah. is the point of contact to expose the wrong intention so that you can begin to live out in that contradiction, a reversal in which you now see God's faithfulness come in and bring reconciliation, yeah. love and allow people to see eye to eye. So yeah. I think a lot of times where we miscommunicate, we want to get away from, but if we would stay in it long enough, from a heart of devotion, not competition, we'll find that that setup is a setup to learn how to communicate where we didn't know how before. It's yeah. not a negative. Yeah. It's a it's a it's an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, I I was asked uh, to do a video on prayer. Now, here's the thing about prayer: is my view of prayer over the last thirty years has changed drastically. Uh, my view of prayer basically is is built out of one concept, and that is that prayer is communication between two people in love. Yeah. And so my prayer is never, oh, holy, almighty God, and wouldest thou. Uh, and I, I mean, I just don't talk that way uh, because for a lot of reasons. <laughs> uh, and I and I don't and I'm not against anybody that does. I've had people yeah. prophesy in old King James over me, you know. Uh, but but I just talk to to my father, just like uh, I would just have a, a a close contact communication with my wife. We just talk and he talks to me and I talk to him and he speaks to in a multi to me in a multiplicity of ways where usually the way I speak to him is generally, you know, very, very fine tuned. It's just one or two different ways. But the, the thing is, is that when we talk about uh, and I'm back to in inclusion uh, because this is where we get in trouble. And I said this in the advertisement, although I did this quickly this afternoon, one of the greatest errors among those who refer to themselves as Christians is the belief and action of excluding those they disagree with. 
Now, I've had people say to uh, my wife and I, I cannot be on Facebook with you, even though we're longtime friends, it's because of what you teach. And my friends will find out that I'm hanging out with you that teaches something that we don't agree with and they'll label me. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. I'm okay if we were to go, we have here, we have a Hebrew church here in town um, and I would have, be okay if, as long as they didn't speak Hebrew and I could understand some of what they were saying, uh, I'd be okay with going there. I'd be okay with going to just about anywhere. And we're about to make a decision as to finally land in a church we might call home just for fellowship. Yes. I, I really don't believe we're on the same page whatsoever, uh, except for maybe a couple of things. But the fact is, if I can't go somewhere and hear something that opposes what I think I believe, then maybe what I think I believe isn't so solid after all. And I need to do what I tell my students and that's go back to the drawing board and look at it again. And so we really do need to be able to embrace those. And, and I admire you, you go to Baptist churches and Turner Burn churches and all these different churches. And I'm thinking, you know, my, my biggest concern since I'm not a traveling minister, my biggest concern is that I'm first thing I'm gonna do is go into some place and I'm going to say something, not intentionally, but just because this is a part of what I've learned and who I am. And, Bam, it's going to so disagree that I'm just going to upset everything in the first meeting. And, and I think we really, we really do have the wisdom of Holy Spirit on how to articulate and convey things. You know, it's good to take the temperature of an audience, but even before you get to that point, Holy Spirit will already let you know what needs to be said and where they're at and what you can do that can kind of help them even with what they're believing where they're at. And then maybe even, as I said before, add a little something extra on the plate just to bring them up to a new level. So I, I, it's so awesome. Uh, you made a statement. Um, uh, you said, I, I can confess that I am one with God, but if I can't have long-term relationships with people who are the image of God, I don't yet believe me and the Father are one. And I posted this today and I said, in the 1970s, we would have said, wow, that's it, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, how, how far does this go where I can lay myself out there and say, look, uh, uh, I'm one with my God and so are yeah. you. But as soon as you blast me for what I, you know, believe yeah. I'm going to click the block button and I'm done with you. How, how far do we go with that? Well, I think, you know, I mean, ultimately, whether we believe we're one with the father or not, we are in spirit. So, yeah, but yeah. It, it, it all comes down to uh, how much of that we want to enjoy in, in our human experience here. Uh, you know, that 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 really is connected to how I view my brother, how how I see, because remember, everybody in your life, I, I take as everybody in my life is me. And uh, and I hope that that I'm also a reflection of them uh, to of them as well. And so we are each other when we see the cloud of witness uh, in, in Hebrews. Right. We're surrounded with a great cloud of witness. And then it says laying aside the the sin or the mistaken identity that has entangled us and running with patience, the race, looking unto Jesus. How come Jesus is over here, but my entangle coming out of sin and entanglement is in the cloud because the cloud of witnesses is the many membered body that is manifest as the one new man. So it's the same thing looking unto Jesus over here when I'm no longer in, entangled is because I have surrounded myself with a cloud of witnesses and I've recognized the purpose of people in my life. Cloud of witnesses isn't just something in the heavenlies. Everybody in your life is also in the cloud. So everybody in your life represents where you are renewed or unrenewed in the way in which you perceive. So the people that kick you off the most is what you still despise about yourself. Now, the way in which you can minister to them, you can't, you can't have a rebuttal against somebody that triggers you. They are your deliverer in that moment. Now, if somebody is wounded by what you're saying, but you're not touched internally in your belief system in a negative way and some tailspin wanting to protect yourself when they do come against you, now you have the counsel of the disposition of the father and the right reflection of their identity to give back to them in that moment. So we are mirrors reflecting. 
And so, you know, when it means to me to be included is I, I like to use this example uh, because uh, whenever I don't yet, uh, when I can't receive somebody, it's really I can't receive me in that aspect. And when I can't receive me, there's a twisted image in the way in which I see my father because the father brings identity. And in that place, I'm struggling with the image of my daddy somewhere in my life, usually in my human experience where I've concluded that something wasn't God, that maybe he was trying to show me something else. But I like to use this scripture in Proverbs where it says, and I don't quote me where it's at, but you guys can find it. It's uh, uh, by wisdom, I founded the heavens and by understanding, I founded the earth. And um, uh, when we when I think of that scripture, I look at it from a different place of us being wisdom and us being understanding, okay? Mm -hmm. But also us having wisdom and us having understanding. So there's multiple layers there of application from spirit as being to the human partnership in implementing and expressing. And so if by wisdom the heavens were founded and, and the heavens are re rever, uh, referring to spirit outside of time, origin, however you want to put it, um, then I can have all kinds of wisdom. I can have all kinds of supernatural experiences and revelations from God. But if I have not love, it doesn't profit me anything. And so understanding comes in in the earth, which I believe begins to surface to apply what's been known in the heavens into covenant relationship because we've walked through situations or contradictions uh, that were there to benefit us, benefit us so that we could be relatable and have mm -hmm. compassion where people are at. Uh, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm threatened by where you're at, or if I'm afraid of what my friends might think if I hang out with you, is it really because I, uh, it's, is it really about my friends? Or is it really about my need to measure up and my need to please others because I don't believe I am worthy as the father declares I am, uh, you know, so a lot of these things are stemming uh, from other issues, other situations. Uh, do I believe that when I speak a truth, nobody's going to hear me? It, it be, uh, am I being persecuted or do I just really believe I'm unheard and I'm now projecting that as an atmosphere for people to agree with it and now mirror it back to me? You know, in which I take it as persecution when the father's trying to say, no, son, no, daughter, this isn't persecution. I'm trying to show you what you've settled for in your own belief system about yourself and about me. And so it really becomes something to where now everything that was divisive, argumentative, strife bearing is simply pointing out what needs to be adjusted in the way in which I perceive myself and the father. And so everything in the earth has been set up carrying the understanding of what we need to be one and to be able to agree at the heart of the matter, which is relationship, and let the doctrines be the buffers that adjust and uh, upset the ego and expose <laughs> what is still interrupting who we really are. You, you know... When it comes to uh, the cloud of witnesses, and I know we're going to be dealing with this in a few yeah. weeks, but uh, but when it comes to the cloud of witnesses and we're all a part of that many membered uh, uh, cloud, yeah. uh, that many membered witnesses. And when Jesus disappeared into the clouds in Acts 1, 9, we are the clouds and, yeah. and I, I, all of that. But you're one of the few people uh, who teach this in the way that you uh, articulate your words about it. And, and I would say this is something that needs to be um, investigated more. It needs to be heard more because if I'm a part of you and you're a part of me, uh, then we really do need to pay attention to the fact that uh, here, here's something. Let me just say it this way, that I have found out that sometimes when it comes to my actions and attitudes, I don't even agree with myself. So, yeah. so, so, uh, but, but I don't throw myself away. Exactly. Okay? I don't try to dismember myself. 
um, be, because I disagree with myself. And so that would be true of all of us, especially when, you know, there's been some, you know, I remember when years ago I came out of a Pentecostal denomination, I was raised in my whole life. Um, and about 10 years of my adult ministry, nine or 10, I was in that denomination until my belief system began to change. Then I no longer fit in. Then I went over into the charismatic camp and I was kind of called a, a cruisomatic and uh, uh, <laughs> a, 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 among other things. And and then then we got into uh, the word of faith and the word circles and we were called name it and claim it people and and you know all these different things and you know we come through the kingdom movement and 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 you know until what a finished work movement and grace movement until I really don't find that I uh, miss uh, I don't I don't find that I am on the same page with all of those camps anymore uh, but I find that I'm not always on the same page with page with my own belief system or those I hang out with because what happens is is I'm I spend so much time in research, so much time in revelation. I'm not talking about, you know, hit Google and go for it. I'm talking about as best as I can take scripture that and find where scripture agrees with scripture, but it's seen through the lens of the proper interpretive lens, which is the love of God, the, uh, uh, the inexpressible, even indescribable, unconditional love of God. And if that interpretive lens does not bring me to a conclusion about scripture with all of the, the information I find about the century and the Greek and Hebrew and et cetera, then I just, I just revert back to square one. I go back yep. and I look at it again. And which this is what I teach my students. If it doesn't line up to the to God's unconditional love, go back and look at it again because your yeah. interpretation of what you're seeing is inaccurate and you've missed something. And that's what yeah. happens so many times. Uh, you know, I say this: if I if if we have we have panel discussions on Tuesdays, and and if, if my view is different from someone else on the panel, we don't give an open rebuke to the other person. Uh, because the fact is, is I'm just one slice of the pie. You know, I would never sit down and eat the whole pie. Now right. I know some people would. Okay. That's dangerous. Okay. Yes, Especially is. after several pies. Uh, but I just take <laughs> a very moderate portion of the pie because I realize I'm like that. My view is just one portion of that. And it takes somebody else's view. And by the time you build the whole thing, we will have a better understanding, even if we don't have all that there is to be understood about it. So yeah. you know what? Uh, you, you said that, that God had uh, uh, placed us, uh, God purposefully places us in situations where we do not always agree on petty things. Yes. I know people that don't agree because I wear a collar and a suit on Thursday nights. Uh, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, hey, I, I some people don't before. like that. I know, man. I mean, really, <laughs> I, some people don't like that I don't wear a mohawk or something, you know, uh, if I could. <laughs> Talk to us some more. <laughs> well, you know, Paul said, be all things to all people. And I think uh, you brought up a, a really important subject is all the different movements you walk through. OK, um, I went I, I go through my videos quite frequently on YouTube and I look at old ones that are that are no longer relevant. And I remember I went to remove uh, one on the Melchizedek order where I'm talking about uh, the trading floors of heaven it had some good stuff in it, but some different things now that I believe differently than uh, than I do now. And I wanted to kind of get rid of that so so people wouldn't be confused. Right. And this lady said, please don't. It, it, I, I've heard the stuff you minister today and I receive it. But I went back to over here when you didn't have that truth, but a different truth. And it's helped me to understand the truth here and now. And I said, what, really? And she said, yes, please leave it up because that truth you had is why you're in the truth you're in now, even though that truth is no longer valid for you today. And so what I found was is that it, what that did for me is it helped me uh, to not feel like I was violating my own belief when I would step down to levels of where I've been, where other people are at in the sense of, you know, progressive unveiling of revelation or the American version of Christianity. And so, you know, it, it helped me to be able to go back to that because think of the encounters you had with God, even when you were 
still had the orphan belief system when we were still religious even though we were fasting and praying to get god to move we had some beautiful encounters of god's presence oh yeah and so i go back to those moments and i i cherish that from a new mindset knowing that the father knew where i that where i needed to be and yet he was patient with me to love me even when i was blind in certain areas so what do i do i go to that place I realize his love and his patience for me. And then I'm able to go to people that are still in that phase. And I can now speak that language and I can love them without feeling like I'm uh, going backwards or violating where the Lord has brought me, you know. And um, you brought up another thing, and that was uh, not even believing ourselves. And I, I believe it says it in the same chapter that I was reading earlier in 2 Corinthians 4. It says, um, uh, verse 5, it says, uh, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now, where do we find treasures in darkness? Uh, we have these treasures in earthen vessels, in a veiled journey, right? In this veiled human experience. And that treasure is Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is the inheritance in the saints, you know, uh, and all of that. So you have places where self in scripture is not referring to who you truly are as a son, but it's referring to ego. So we, we don't... Uh, the excellency of the power is not of my ego. It's not of my my carnal thinking, which would always exalt itself and can never Good. be trusted. But Good. I'm still a partaker in my sonship and partnering just as Jesus himself when he walked the earth, the same manifestation. And so, because, you know, with Jesus, even though he said, it's not me, but the father in me. He walked very confidently in believing that what he did and said, uh, he did it because he was given that authority and he was sent to do those things as the son. And so, you know, to not trust my ego, and I think a lot of times to know the difference between my ego and my true sonship identity is really reflected in the midst of where there's agreement and disagreement with one another. That's mm -hmm. what points it out. So when I when I listen to you talk, uh, Dr. Bill, uh, I'm having an encounter and fellowship with the father. This is how I posture myself. I'm listening to how the father is loving me through you. And I'm listening to how the father is loving you to you back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm just watching this exchange and, I, and I'm just bearing witness to it. And, and I'm, a lot of times memories will come up of other times I've, I've had very similar moments. And usually those memories are connected to a specific thing he was emphasizing that now begins to come out now. And that's how we kind of call to remembrance. What is the father presently revealing like in this conversation and in this uh, video right now? And so what that does is it builds a habitation. It builds, it's like uh, the stones that Israel would bring together and they would build a altar to the Lord. They would build uh, an altar of remembrance, you know, and uh, when they stacked all the stones together and when Joshua crossed over to as a remembrance. And I think that if when we bring a truth, this has been my posture, I am okay watering down a truth I have for somebody else that isn't maybe seeing what I'm seeing. I'm okay to hear their truth and not override their truth, but bring in something to affirm the father in that truth that's leading them somewhere else without it um, necessarily uh, causing their walls to come up. Because we know it's easier to take a city than a brother offended. And um, so in order to not offend one another, we can't walk on eggshells. I've said this to people, eggshells are hatched lies. So if you're walking on eggshells, you're actually permitting people to stay in their same state of, of, of self-deception. But if somebody comes to me and says, Brian, I, I want you to speak into my life and father me. 
I am going to be able to speak to them at a different level than let's say just somebody who's come alongside and we're just brothers in the Lord or brother and sister and we're just having a natural conversation. I have to know to uh, not to build on another man's foundation based on what I've been invited into. So I look at that invitation and I look at what each person represents in my life and the level of interaction. And I simply look to be sensitive to that communion of the father that is being revealed at many different levels. Amen. Uh, to uh, to uh, uh, bring agreement to what you said, uh, Dr. K. Fairchild said that which we had one time was true for where we were at that time, but became truth as it was enlarged um, uh, and became more true or more pure. Yeah, that's um, powerful. powerful. You know, I, I have, uh, and this is just a rough guess, uh, used to when you only had a few hundred, you could count your videos on YouTube. Uh, yeah. But uh, but as they grow, uh, I'm having a hard time finding the, the the counter that they have embedded somewhere. And I'm sure there's up close to uh, a thousand YouTube videos on our ministry YouTube channel. I know that the earlier ones uh, that I really don't find as much agreement in. Uh, and and I've you know, I, I have people on some videos uh, with me that. Uh, at one time were Facebook friends, but decided because our f theologies weren't exactly the same, they were the ones to click the, the block button and, uh, and, and, and that's okay. Uh, but, but where I was going was, you know, on my, I have two YouTube channels on my personal YouTube channel. I have, uh, I have a song. I have a couple of songs that I wrote, uh, but I have a song I sang at my dad's memorial service and I wrote it, uh, for him. Uh, based on, um, I can't remember the the artist uh, name, uh, but he called it uh, here in heaven, uh, tears in heaven, and I called it there in heaven. And I I wrote the song based on what I believe I heard my dad saying from the other side. Now, of mm -hmm. course, that was funneled through my experiences with my dad and his belief system. It wasn't really fully my belief system and definitely isn't my belief system today, but it's still on my YouTube channel. Now I used to have a lot of MP3 videos on our, um, um, our, our YouTube, our, our, our website. I removed the MP3 videos, uh, uh, MP3 audios, uh, just because they were from so far back that I know there's things that I really are way out there, but you brought up a good point how that sometimes those things can help other people. Now I don't have any new MP3s that could counteract any of that, uh, because I do YouTube videos. I don't do anything hardly on MP3. So, you know, I'm probably in sync here with what needs to happen, but you can go to some of our early YouTube uh, and Facebook videos. And it's like, you know, uh, people can say, I know you don't agree with that anymore. Uh, and, but you can hear something more current and it's like, that's why here's the transition. Yeah. Here's what's taken place. And so God has placed us in each other's lives. And if you don't want to interact with other people's lives, I'm just going to, I don't want to lose anybody, but let me just give a big shout out. Stay off of YouTube, get off of YouTube. If yeah. you don't want to interact with people, because here's the thing you want to yeah. be on YouTube. You're not just going to hit all of the, the spirit filled full gospel type believers on there. You're going to get some people. I know on my second timeline, I've got a lot of Catholic priests. I've got Hindus and Buddhists and you name yeah. it. And you know what? They never give me any trouble. Oh, they yeah. never give me any trouble. Uh, but Amen. the fact is, while I don't believe that God founded all religions per se, because religion yeah. is really something that came up within the belief system of man. I just believe that God is in all people of all yeah. religions. So I'm one with them. And if they right. if they wave USA flags and they burn USA flags and they hate Americans or they want to shoot people or whatever the case may be, whether I like it or not, Apostle, we are one together. We're a right. part of one another because we're one in the father. Uh, the Bible says in first Corinthians six seventeen, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. That's it right. depends on what translation you read that out of, uh, that you can find some things that make it sound like that. If you'll do the joining, then you yeah. become a part of the Lord. 
But yes. the fact is, is the Bible teaches us that the Lord has joined us to himself. That's he right. chose us in that moment and joined us to himself. And the scripture even explains why. It's because he loved us. I mean, he is so madly in love with his creation that if you're a dad, and you and I know this shouldn't be bias of just our boys, but if you ever had a son and seen your son born, it's right there. Like that's yeah. my boy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a dad filled with pride. You're thinking about we're gonna get to play baseball together, and I'm gonna get yeah. to teach him stuff. And can you imagine how God felt when all of a sudden he spoke us into being and instantly yeah. joined us to his, himself because he loved us? I mean, it's so awesome. It is. It, that is uh, that is the one thing that I, you know, I know for me, like um, I talk to a lot of people about, you know, the everlasting gospel is our theme and and mm -hmm. uh, bringing people into more of the eternal perspective of the quantum Christ and and being one and uh, how all, all humanity is included in, you know, in Christ, in God. Um, it changes the way we pray. It changes repentance. It changes uh, there is no longer a second work of sanctification. <laughs> um, it's amazing uh, how we come into that. Now, I've I've run into a lot of people that says, well, what about warfare? What about uh, the devil? What about all of that? Now, with, with sure. some of them one-on-one, -on -one, I can go deeper and I can unveil where I'm at. But with many of them, it's a rebuttal. So what do I say to them? I said, God, how can I, how can I, keep us honoring and having a relationship in which maybe if we journey for a while, they'll get to see it demonstrated and come into it. Because I mean, uh, the fruit of the spirit isn't just love, joy, and peace. It's also long suffering endurance. And so we need to be able to be that for one another. And so sometimes uh, the best thing to do is not try to shove down their throat where they're not ready to receive. And so this is, this is my new uh, way of going about it. I say, look, you're, you're in the season of your warfare um, and warfare and the demonic attack and the tutoring of the law is while you're still entangled with the cares of this life. And I said, all of it is going to be used. And eventually you're going to come to the revelation where all of that is no more. And mm -hmm. you're operating in the earth that is the lord's where the glory is where dominion is where rest is you know i said and so until your mind is is ready to where it, you know you're going to strive till you strive no more you're going to fight till you fight no more i don't care how you say it you can't make yourself do it <laughs> in the flesh it's got to be a revelation and it's got to be a, a timing and i believe every revelation we had it wasn't just one day we got it. We said the magic prayer, magic word, and now I got the truth. There was a lot of journeying of situations that led up to that mm -hmm. truth, finding a place active in our life mm -hmm. and at the appointed time when Christ is revealed. And so I just tell people, give, cut themselves some slack. Um, so I've seen people try to put on the everlasting gospel from a place of religiosity, and mm -hmm. it becomes another dead doctrine. Uh, the key here is letting the Father love you where you're at and what you've yet to understand. It's not your responsibility to unveil. Just simply embrace the now and, and let mm -hmm. the Father be uh, the expressor of who he is in and through everything. Uh, you know, Jesus likened the kingdom unto a lot of things in Scripture. And so. But I, I think there was a lot more to that. And, and uh, recently I, I did a post on this. I said, look, when you have come into the place of just letting the father have his way, everything in your life will be likened unto the kingdom of heaven. Every situation is a parable of the kingdom. And so it's either a parable of what the father is revealing of what you're not or what the father is revealing of what you are. And that is something that is journeyed in a family. His family has always been with him. We've always been one with God. And he never did anything without his family. He didn't, he didn't sit there on a throne uh, as superior, individualized God. And all of us are just kind of servants, you know, bowing down, hoping not to be consumed. That was never the image of our daddy. We were always in him, on his lap, always a part of the process, co-creators, uh, partners in him, with him. 
and he's never done it without us and he never will. Yeah. And the more we can appropriate that with the body of Christ, realizing that, um, and I, I'm right with you there, uh, Bishop, I'm not a universalist. I don't believe all religions uh, take you to God. Um, but I do notice that, like, I remember being in the church uh, and, then, you know, the pastor getting up and saying, this, uh, this you know, Hindu cult over here is, uh, yeah. you know, they can, they're healing people, but it's the power of the devil. Well, let me just tell you something. Uh, there's only one power, and it's God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so here's my theory on it. God poured out his spirit on all flesh. So it is the power of God that is healing through all these other religions. Um, but what they've done is they've taken what they've known of the culture they're in and what's been presented to them of their religion, and they've just wrapped that around the spirit that they're carrying which is right. still Christ in them. And so uh, if we can glean from that, we don't have to adopt their religious principles or rules or culture, uh, you know, uh, but we can realize Christ in them and no longer feel threatened. Uh, I was, I was reading uh, or somebody shared it, shared with me a post about how uh, somebody had said there was a medium in their church and people needed to get out of that church because there was a medium there. Well, you know what? Maybe the medium is there for you to love them. And, and you know what? Help them to realize that if they're loved, maybe they don't need to mix match other stuff. They can just come fully in to their identity, yeah. you know? And, and so we need to quit being fearful since we're in his hand. We're secure in him and there's nothing lacking. And so wherever I feel like uh, I lack something, I'm going to go overboard on claiming I don't. And I'm going to, 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 to disprove what you believe. And I'm going to dominate you and I'm going to separate myself from you. And it's all inadequacy. And so, you know, uh, it's easy to see it. Uh, that I, you know, I counsel, I counsel pastors and I have pastors that call me. I have leaders in churches that call me. It's funny. They call me. I'm just this nobody. I don't have a degree. I don't know, you know, I, but, but because of all the stuff I've walked through where I look like a total failure, I look totally religious. I was the Absalom stealing people from the church. I was the Lone Ranger prophet. I was all those things. OK, and I, I don't regret any of it because the father has stripped me of a lot of condemnation through walking me through that process. He said, son, you needed to fail enough to know that I love you. Isn't that amazing? You needed to fail enough to know that it really wasn't about your effort to measure up, but that that you're loved. And I, I it took me a long time to see that. But what that has done is it's opened the door for people to say, you know what? You've been through this. I, I just need to share what I'm going through. And right. I'm telling you, it's the same thing everywhere we go. It's, you know, uh, people rising up and, and, and fighting one another all in the name of love. And yeah. I'll tell you, the fruit of love is peace. And as much as depends on you live peaceably. So if my bro if, if somebody out there don't want to live peaceably with me, that does not give me an excuse to have a rebuttal to reject them or not include them. What I need to do is I need to say, hey, it, it depends on me. It's not on them. It's on me. And, it, and it's not on me to convince them. It's on me to example what it means to be vulnerable and to just simply love people. Right. Absolutely. And, and, you know, everything that you're calling a, a failure in your life uh, just brought you to a place of saying, you know what, I couldn't depend on my beliefs and my philosophies. And, right. and so it's just like the children of Israel. Every time something didn't go right, all it was was God trying to show them that they needed something greater than themselves. And yes. uh, that's, that's usually where we're at. Um, you know, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, to say that, um, you know, we we do that in life. We we look at ourselves and uh, we we don't see that my journey was not your journey and your journey was not somebody else's journey. Uh, even if where we end up is not even exactly on the same page, because what I try to do, you know, years ago, of course, uh, I've, I've been doing this for four years or better. I've had guests on that would talk about things that would just frustrate me. 
uh, back way back in the day. And now what I do today is I don't have everybody that lives in the same house I do, but I kind of like for people to live at least in the same neighborhood so that we have a, a coherent and a, a unified message to, uh, because our, our audience has increased uh, exponentially. Uh, but, but let me just say this, it, here, here's the definition, and then I'll give you the word, at what the definition is for afterwards. Uh, if I expect you to believe exactly like I believe, and I push you trying to prove that what I believe is right and you're wrong, and I try to persuade you to conform to my ideas and my philosophies, I just gave you the definition of a cult. That's right. And what people don't want to recognize it among... Uh, and I don't use the word Christianity other than for teaching purposes uh, because they were called Christians at Antioch, but there really wasn't a label going around that, hey, we're all Christians and you're not. And that's usually what the message sends. You're not like us, which the Jews did that a lot. You're not like us. Therefore, you're next to nothing. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I don't like to to try to segregate groups. I just like to let people that know, to know that we're all part of the same uh, created group of people. It's just that some people haven't maybe got the same message yet that someone else has. And, you know, I'm good with that. But, but we can't allow ourselves to try to conform other people to our way of believing. I teach yeah. online, and when someone says what you're teaching is wrong, I don't try to push them and, and, and badger them. I just try to continue to teach truth, what I believe to be true, because what I believe to be true is very much truth to me. But as revelation continues to unfold, I want to tell you, this has been a tremendous journey. And I know that my belief system will continuously be upgraded until I come to a place where my soul looks exactly identical to my spirit and the lamb and the bride who has is being adorned has been adorned and the marriage takes place. And we're no longer thinking in two different arenas of thought, two different schools of thought. Yes. We're thinking that when that happens, it's going to happen. I'm going to see that in somebody else. They're going to see it in me. There's going to start being this, not only this one man in the one man, but there's going to be one mind uh, over this whole earth. And I think there may, may at that point be no longer a need for this, this earthly awareness of things. But until then, right. okay, and that's speculation. But until then, uh, we need to walk circumspectly we need to walk as the lord would walk and treat others the way that he would and we do that a lot by looking at the example of jesus therefore it requires a bible okay so yeah. so we look at the examples of jesus and how he how he uh, responded to uh, the naysayers out there to the mean people out there even when those in his own hometown would not receive uh, the message he was trying to impart to them and and so you know we're always going to be in situations apostle i'm going to give you a closing statement here uh just before we go off the air but we're always going to be in situations where something is going to rub us wrong you know the bible said that there was a the the servant of satan was sent to buffet the apostle paul now i have no doubt no doubt that servant of satan came from the roman government who actually was trying to buffet Paul. The word buffet comes from the word we might, as we see a boat tied up to a dock and the waves are beating it against the dock. That's where we get that word from in the English language. And I have no doubt that we have things that buffet us and try to rub us wrong all the time. Uh, we ought to really take a deep breath, step back, take a deep breath before we even give a reaction to that. Because uh, I remember many years ago, and I would say I was probably uh, 19, maybe 20 years old, maybe nine, I think about 18 or 19 years old. And I, I, I had someone uh, did not want to hear about Jesus, but I was persistent that they were going to hear about Jesus, whether they liked it or not. Man, I got dead. I got punched out. And, you know, the first wow. thing that came out of my, my, my heart was what would Jesus do? Now, of course, I didn't label this multi-million dollar industry of WWJD. I didn't get any royalties for that. Uh, but man, that came out of my heart and, and under uh, out of my breath. And uh, we really, really do need to think about how our father would react to things because we really are one with him. And I'll just tag this on whether we like it or not. That's right. <laughs> but we That's are. Right. So, 
I, I so appreciate this tonight. And I'd like you just to, you know, any word that just might uh, want to roll out of you tonight uh, as a closing word, please do that. Well, you know, what comes to my mind is, is just as when we were young in the Lord and we were the way in which we kind of forced, tried to get others to get saved. Um, and we, we experienced, I was punched in the face before, so I understand that. And so I can really relate. Um, I look back on that now, back in the day, I would have said that's persecution. But now I would have said, maybe if I presented it differently. And so we tend to want to follow with the Old Testament prophets and even the early church that um, were very radical in the way they ministered. And I think a lot of the resistance they encountered was also because of the way they were presenting it. Um, I, and I think a lot of times we think unless we're sh shouting and yelling and commanding people to repent, that somehow we're compromising the kingdom of God. But we're not. You know, um, being able to just simply have a relationship with people um, and realize that where somebody is at, if they're not ready to hear where you're at um, and you're and you're hurt by that, just realize that's God coming to you and he's showing you where you're still trying to do something to be something. And he's wanting to bring you into a deeper place of, of really resting in your true identity as sons and daughters. And where you're not triggered, you're going to be able to be an asset to the people that the Father has brought in your life. And last but not least, I'll say that um, there are really about three different types of relationships in your life. I mean, there's multiple kinds and levels, but you have those that walk beside you. And uh, they're with you in that companionship. You're kind of at the same place. You have those that are that, that you are leading, those that uh, maybe you foreran for them. You've walked through some things yeah. that you're just now coming into. And so you're there to kind of help them be encouraged to keep going and bring them into the next place. And you have those that have gone before you that are challenging you and stretching you so you don't get too comfortable and settle where you're at. And, and kind of be go, become stale. And so if we can understand that the kingdom of God, which is upon us, which is uh, in us and which is at hand, are those different types of relationships, we can really begin to discern that everybody and everything in our life is carrying a revelation of the Father, even if it doesn't mm -hmm. look like it presently. And so I just want to encourage you, receive everything is from the hand of God and uh, allow truth to be something that is more demonstrated through a heart of love, compassion, and receiving the communion of the Father in one another. Amen. Amen. Well put. Uh, Ephesians 4, 6, uh, 4 through 6 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all who, and through all, and in you all, or mistranslated should say, and in us all. We're yes. all a part of this. So I hope that this was a blessing to you tonight uh, that are watching. If you would, please click like and then click share, and I will post a reminder in just a little bit about it. Uh, but we are so appreciate you, Apostle Brian, for oh, being on with me tonight. Um, you're a blessing. Oh. Uh, I also have fun when we're, um, when we're on together. <laughs> I really appreciate you, Bishop. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And uh, I look forward to our Friday morning series coming up. Uh, I don't know exactly when. I think it's in a, a month or so, but uh, we'll be announcing that I'll be talking with you about it. But uh, thank you so much. And we we just say that, it, again, if you want to know more about Apostle Brian, about his family, about what they do, uh, Father of Glory Global Ministry, so that's F O G mg.org. I put it again in the chat room and you can go to their website. Uh, there's a place there that as you are uh, inspired to, you can um, uh, click on us. I'm sure there's a support page there that you can actually uh, become a, a partner with their ministry. Every ministry loves partners, but as all of us, we depend on the Lord. That's the example right. we uh, try to show that our relationship with our father is so real that he is not just the one who holds the provision. He is the capital P, the provider. Amen. And uh, we're so grateful for uh, all that you do. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family. And we'll see you another time. Amen. Amen.
hang right there when we go off the air. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Wow, you all are such blessings. Thank you so much, and we will see you again. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Bye-bye.